For some morbid reason, self-surgery fascinates me. I don't know why laymen think it's a good idea to try and perform a surgery that professionals train for years to understand without the proper equipment or even a sanitised environment. Some do so because doctors refuse to perform the procedure, such as in the case of Amanda Fielding, who performed self-trepanation. But in this case, this Reddit user felt that the surgery was too expensive and too much effort, so she decided to do it herself. Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries, conspiracies and true crime, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon and a PayPal, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, feel free to check those out, links will be in the description. This video will contain vague discussions of self-surgery and other potentially distressing topics. Viewer discretion is advised. You can head over to my Patreon for an uncut version of this video, which features extra disturbing details and images. Reddit user Cyprol made a post around 7 months ago on the Corn Beef approved subreddit. Before anyone asks, I did not find this post on there, and up until very recently, I'd lived my life in blissful ignorance of its existence. I clicked on it for the first and last time and wanted to remove my eyeballs after about two posts, so I would highly recommend against visiting that subreddit if you want to keep your last meal down. Anyway, the post read, This was for fun. I know I can save up for a helmet, but I enjoyed doing this more. Oof, I don't know what I have just done. I guess a bit of backstory is good. I'm taking my motorcycle license and I love it, but the helmets are uncomfortable for me. I have chubby cheeks, so they push on them and give me blisters inside my mouth. I'm not overweight, it's just genetic. I thought, hey, why don't I just make my cheeks slimmer? There's a procedure, buccal fat removal, where they cut out a fat pad in your cheeks. Either way, it's usually expensive and too much effort, so I thought it'd be fun to do it myself. I watched YouTube videos of the procedure carried out by doctors, and they all said it was an easy, simple and fast procedure, so I thought, hey, why not save money, time and effort and do it myself? I watched a YouTube video on the procedure after this, and I guess as surgery goes, it does look relatively easy. But the surgeon said that you don't want to remove too much, and that's where the clinical judgement comes in, which OP seems to have none of. OP seems to be doing this for practical reasons more than aesthetic, but removing too much fat can cause signs of ageing on the skin, which would certainly be a concern the older you get. Well, I started collecting materials. A hobby knife from my basement. I have not one clue whose it was, it's a shared basement. Ethanol disinfectant, tweezers, anaesthetic spray stuff that you use for As much as I love pain, I doubted whether I could handle cutting open my cheek and pulling out the fat pad without some numbing. I tried ordering an actual mini suture kit from Amazon, which had stitches, a needle, an actual medical knife, medical tweezers, but my card kept declining so I gave up. It's extremely concerning how nonchalantly she's approaching this. She clearly did some research, but then decides to use a hobby knife that could belong to anyone in the house, and then anaesthetic that you use for d which I didn't even realise was a thing until now. Had her card not declined, maybe she would have been better prepared, but still, it just kind of seems like she's rushing into this, as she could have just waited to be able to acquire the equipment that she needed. It's also not clear what she's using to clean her skin. Ethanol would probably be fine for the equipment she's using, but probably not the best thing for your skin. So, fast forward two weeks, I moved country for uni and was in my own room. I finally had everything set. I spent two hours in the morning trying to reach the fat on one cheek, but I kept almost fainting, so I gave up. I had a hangover, so maybe that had something to do with it. I was pissed because I couldn't find the fat pad. And this is why performing self-surgery is such a bad idea. Obviously, it's going to look easy in a YouTube video when you see it being done by a professional, but they're going to know exactly what they're doing and they've probably had years of experience. For someone with none of that to jump in and try to do that, they're obviously going to run into problems. I don't even know how she had the balls to attempt this to begin with, 
let alone hung over, and for two whole hours without success. Either way, in the evening I tried again. Instead I used the scissors on my tiny Swiss army knife to cut instead of the hobby knife. The anaesthetic kept wearing off so it wasn't pain free, but I eventually reached the fat. Within the first hour I came to the conclusion that there was nothing easy, simple and fast about it. I think anyone could have told her that, and I'm not sure what's worse, a hobby knife that could belong to anyone and could have been anywhere, or a Swiss army knife that's probably never going to be able to be sanitised enough to make it safe for surgery. The next bit gets kind of graphic so I'm not going to read it, but to summarise, there was a lot of blood so it was hard for OP to see what she was doing, but after three full hours, she eventually managed to remove the fat pad and didn't even use stitches at the end. And here's where things take an even worse turn. She decided to put it on toast and eat it. She took photos of each step of this, showing the inside of the cheek after, the fat that had been removed, then on toast and the piece of toast after she'd eaten it. Naturally, some users were worried about OP's mental health, so in an edit she said, People concerned over my mental health, please, I don't need your two cents. My mental health is fine, I am not depressed or suicidal, and I don't have a body image issue, I just enjoy pain and pushing myself to my limits. If you are prepared to take the consequences of an action, then you are fine to take the action. And hey, it was fun. That is basically the only reason I do anything. I'm glad she sees it as a positive experience, and to be honest, it could have gone so much worse. She could have ended up in hospital or even died, at the time or during the healing process if she ended up getting an infection. Regardless, I think people are right to be worried about her mental health. It's such an extreme thing to do and it doesn't even look like she needed it. She posted a photo of her face that showed the cheek that was still intact too, and it's a little bit hard to tell from the angle, but it really doesn't look like she had particularly chubby cheeks at all. If anything, it sounds like the problem is simply an ill-fitting helmet, which could have easily been replaced. She mentions in the comments that she couldn't afford to buy a new helmet, and sure, if you're buying a fancy new helmet, I'm sure they can be quite expensive, but I just had a look on eBay and to get a second-hand one, you can get it as cheap as like £5. Regardless, I don't think I'm alone in saying I'd be willing to pay a significant amount of money before I cut into my own face. Opie makes it clear that she enjoys pain and pushing herself to her limits, which really makes me worry what she might do next. Physically harming yourself for pleasure or simply to push your limits is a very slippery slope, and people end up getting desensitised to something that they once thought that they'd never do. Judging by the photos, she looks pretty young, certainly not past her twenties, and if at that young age she's already performing self-surgery, I dread to think what she might be doing when she's 40 or 50 if she doesn't find a way to break the cycle. Some commenters suggested that the reason OP gave for performing self-surgery to make her helmet fit was really just a front for body dysmorphia. As I said before, her cheeks don't appear very chubby in the photos she shared, certainly not enough to make it so uncomfortable for her to wear a helmet. It sounds a plausible theory that she sees her cheeks as chubbier than they actually are and simply just wanted thinner cheeks. When this surgery is done professionally, it's usually for aesthetic reasons to make the face look slimmer. In fact, I couldn't find any information online on any instances of buccal fat removal that were conducted for practical reasons as opposed to cosmetically. That's not to say there aren't any, but it must be extremely rare and it certainly seems more plausible that OP did this to herself because of how her cheeks looked as opposed to any other reason such as making a helmet fit. I wonder if it's something that she looked into and wanted to do for a long time and then she just happened to get a helmet that didn't fit right and just used that as an excuse to go through with it. If OP is not suffering with body dysmorphia or some other kind of mental illness and she plain and simply just did this surgery to make a helmet fit, that's a really irresponsible thing to do and could have consequences for others too. She mentioned living in Europe and having free healthcare, so implied that it wouldn't matter if she needed antibiotics or had to see a doctor because she wouldn't have to pay for it. Someone has to pay for it though. Healthcare isn't actually free, it's funded by taxes. Even at the best of times, you shouldn't be wasting a doctor's time if you don't need it, 
because you might be taking that time from someone who really does need it. But this was seven months ago, still in the middle of a pandemic, where doctors are even busier, and going out unnecessarily is increasing your risk of catching COVID or passing it on to someone else. So while I really hope OP isn't in a bad mental state, it's a selfish and irresponsible thing to do if she made this decision with a clear mind. While the vast majority of commenters seem to believe OP's story, there were a few who said that they thought it was fabricated and that the photos were fake. One reason being that the story is just so bizarre, especially when OP said that she ate the fat. But if you've watched my videos for a while, or even just hung around the disturbing side of the internet for long enough, you'll know that it's really not unheard of for people to do such extreme things to themselves, or even worse. As someone who would have puked as soon as I saw the fat tissue, it is hard for me to wrap my head around the idea of someone doing that, but at the same time, it really doesn't surprise or shock me at this point. Some suggested that fake blood and non-human meat was used in the photos, or that they were edited, and I wouldn't rule this out, but they don't look obviously fake. There doesn't appear to be much swelling in the area, but it's kind of hard to tell from the angle, and it's also important to remember that the effects of any surgery can be different for different people. There would be some swelling, but not everyone's face would blow up like a tennis ball. I imagine it's quite hard to get a clear photo of the inside of your cheek, especially without having a tiny camera. But in OP's photo, there does appear to be an incision in her cheek of about the size that you would expect of in a surgery like this. Maybe that's just how her cheek folds and she covered it in fake blood. I have no idea, but it doesn't look like it would be that easy to fake. I really hope OP did make the story up and that the photos are fake, that would be so much better than the thought of her actually performing this surgery on herself. But I haven't seen a point that has convinced me of that yet. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments, as well as any other similar cases of self-surgery you know of. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my patrons, whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.